NGB 特許ワールドツアーアフリカ編のナビゲーターを務めます NGB の小林です私は主に科学材料系の分野につきまして外国特許の権利化のサポートをさせていただいております本日の訪問先は南アフリカのスプーアンドフィッシャー事務所です弊社との付き合いも長くアフリカの出願では多くの取引のある事務所です今回インタビューに応じていただくのは弁護士弁理士でヨハネスブルク大学で教授もされているジョン・マクナイトさんですそれではスプーアンドフィッシャー事務所に向かいましょうグッドモーニング。今日は、パテントファイリングのアフリカのコンティネント。Welcome, Professor McKnight. Please tell us about yourself and your role within Spoo and Fisher. My name is John McKnight, and I am a patent attorney with Spoo and Fisher based here in Johannesburg, South Africa. I have some 28 years' experience in patent law, and I have practiced both here in South Africa and in the United Kingdom. Having said that, I am delighted to be based in Johannesburg and practicing in Africa because I believe that Africa holds a great degree of promise and potential, and it is very exciting to be a part of that. Thank you, Professor. Can you tell us something about your firm? Spoon Fisher is a boutique intellectual property law firm which practices IP law across the African continent and elsewhere, for example, the Caribbean. 2020 is our centenary year, having started in Pretoria, South Africa, way back in 1920. Today, we have over 350 partners and staff and have our principal offices in South Africa and also the Channel Islands. We do, however, have offices and practice directly in multiple African countries, as you can see from the attached slide. Where we do not have offices and where we cannot file directly, we work with carefully selected local associates. And we spend a lot of time traveling to these countries to meet with and assist our associates. Thank you. Africa is a very big continent. Can you give us some background on Africa and its different legal systems? Certainly. Most people do not realize just how big Africa is. As you can see from the attached slide, it is bigger than China, the US, India, and the European Union. Combined. It currently has a population of about 1.2 billion people. The one thing about Africa is that it was heavily colonized at the turn of the century, as you can see from the attached slide, which is from 1913, just before the outbreak of World War I, after which things changed somewhat. What you will notice from this slide is the strong and distinct areas of French and British colonization. And this is still reflected in Africa today in the legal systems in these areas. In particular, Africa has two main filing organizations, being a REPO, which stands for the African Regional Intellectual Property Organization, and which covers mainly the former British colonies, and then OAPI, which stands for African Intellectual Property Organization, and which covers mainly the former French colonies. You can see how just two applications secures your rights in a large portion of Africa. And by including Nigeria and South Africa, you can see how just four applications secures rights in over 75% of Africa's geography and over 80% of its commercial activity. As you can see, most African countries are members of the PCT. And many Japanese companies sell products throughout Africa. Thank you, Professor. Can we explore filing in these four regions in greater detail? Certainly. Let's start with Nigeria. Nigeria is not a member of either a REPO or ORP, but currently has a population of over 206 million people and is a significant economy. It is a former British colony, so that the patent law and practice is based on British practice, and the law of England and Wales is very persuasive in Nigeria. You can see a general upward trend in patent filings in Nigeria over the last 20 years, beginning with just over 400 applications in 2000, leading up to some 1,100 applications in 2019. This, I believe, is indicative not only of increased confidence in the country, 
but recognition of its increased influence in the area. How about OAPI, which more or less sounds Nigeria? Yes, OAPI filings have also increased over the last few years, but not to the extent of Nigeria. As I mentioned previously, OAP primarily concerns the former French colonies, and so is based on French law, and French is the language of the proceedings, but you can file in English. It is also a one-size-fits-all organization, so you cannot elect which member states you would like protection in, you get them all. There is also central attack in OAP, so this inflexibility and associated expense makes it a less popular option. How does this compare with ARIPO? Well, the ARIPO figures are much higher than the OARP, and this, I believe, can be attributed to the fact that ARIPO is structurally very similar to the European Patent Convention, and most practitioners are familiar with this type of arrangement. There is a central application process, central substantive examination and grant, following which the application becomes a national patent in the member states of interest. These national patents are subject only to local revocation, so there is no central attack. The language of the proceedings is also English, so all of these factors to make combine to make a repo a popular filing choice. The demographics of the applicants show that by far the US is the largest filer, with Japan quite low on the list, comparatively speaking. The preferred technologies tell a story which now differs from when mining and agriculture used to dominate although pharmaceuticals have always been widely protected in the region. And finally, South Africa. Yes. Well, the numbers for South Africa are disappointing. I would really have loved to have seen an upward trend similar to a repo in Nigeria, but I think there are a number of factors, principally economic and political, which undermine the confidence in the region. Nonetheless, we still do enjoy robust filing figures although these do not reflect our potential. What is interesting is that South Africa will shortly be moving from a deposit system to one of substantive search and examination. And this, I think, will change the picture. Indeed, as we speak, a cohort of examiners is being trained at our patent office, not only by EPO examiners, but also by a team from the Japanese patent office. As you can see, Japan is not a major father in South Africa but the principal technologies are as in a repo. Thank you, Professor. What closing remarks would you like to make? I am often asked about enforcement of patent rights in Africa, and I must be clear that it is possible to enforce patent rights in Africa, and relief can include injunctions, delivery up, and damages. Most patent litigation is in South Africa, but there have been cases in Nigeria, Kenya and a repo of member countries. It is interesting and encouraging to note that an increasing number of African countries are progressing from a registration system to a substantive examination, most notably South Africa. Interestingly, patent protection can also be obtainable by confirmation of a UK European patent, but only in certain African countries. In conclusion, it is encouraging to note that patent filing numbers indicate a steady upward trend with the exception of South Africa. This reflects a growing awareness of and confidence in Africa. Increased political stability across the region contributes to this, but emergence of the middle class and consumerism is a principal driving factor. Africa is a sleeping giant, but it is beginning to stir and we are proud to be a presence on the continent and to contribute to its emergent success. Domo arigato. Thank you, Professor. 以上、スプーンとフィッシャー事務所のジョン・マクナイトさんに、アフリカ地域における特許出願に関して、現状と将来の展望についてお伺いしました。ご質問などがございましたら、お気軽に弊社までお問い合わせください。ご視聴ありがとうございました。<音楽>